welcome to today's session on must know CNCF resources for project owners. And today I'm joined by Don. Don, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So I've been in the technology industry for over 20 years, working mostly on open source software from companies like Intel, Puppet, and now at VMware, I am director of open source community strategy within the open source program office. I'm on the steering committee for the Linux Foundation's to-do group. I'm a governing board member and maintainer for the Linux Foundation's Chaos Project. I'm a board member of Open UK and co-chair of TAG Contributor Strategy. Yeah, and I'm Catherine. Uh, I joined the Cloud Native, no, the Cloud Native, not the open source community, uh, less than two years ago, and I'm totally hooked. Love it. And I work for Boyan, the creator of Linkerd, where I work very closely with our end user community. And I'm also the maintainer of the Cloud Native Glossary. So as mentioned, we're going to talk today about CNCF resources for project owners. But before we uh, do that, let's talk about why we do a toolkit, uh, why we need a toolkit at all, right? Uh, because maybe you're thinking if we have great code that solves a real pain point and have docs, isn't that enough? Um, but it turns out, of course, that is the basis, that's the foundation, but there is a lot more to it. Right? And if you'll join tomorrow's keynote, you'll hear that um, project is very much like a lemon tree. It needs uh, time and care to bear fruit. Uh, so let's have a look at all the different things that a project need that may not be that obvious, but are very, very important. So here you see a lot of things, right? You see governance, user recruitment, marketing, events. It's kind of overwhelming. And the CNCF does help with some of this, right? You get marketing support, PR and infrastructure tooling, but what about the rest? Yeah, you are a developer, you're not necessarily uh, good at recruiting uh, contributors or motivating them. So how can you possibly do all these things? Um, and the good news is you don't really have to figure it out all by your own because we're open source, right? We are uh, a community, it's all about community and it's not only within your project, it should be across projects. And the CNCF is our common home, right? And it really provides this great platform for us to connect uh, and learn from each other, exchange ideas, and really create this thriving ecosystem of successful projects. And that is really what the TAG Contributor Strategy is about. So we are a group of people from a variety of CNCF projects that are committed to helping projects succeed. By maintainers for maintainers, we define strategies to build, scale, and retain contributor communities. So if you're a project maintainer, we definitely should connect. You can either join the effort or uh, just use the resources. And um, so let's have here a quote from one of the people uh, of your peers who has been using it. So Dipti uh, from the Vitesse team uh, said that uh, the tag was very, very uh, useful when they set out to uh, restructure their government's um, governance. Um, system. And um, so, yeah, let's have a quick look at what the TAC contributor strategy um, offers overall. Like, there are three main buckets. Uh, once you have the maintainer circle, these are regular events where maintainers meet to discuss uh, how they run their projects, to exchange ideas. These are super valuable uh, ways to connect and, and learn from one another, and, and you should definitely uh, attend. Then there are like informational and training resources. These are like things like guides, tutorials, best practices, templates, and strategies to, for building um, uh, contributor communities. And then just general guidance on how to um, engage with your contributors. Um, so first thing you should know is that there is a website. Uh, here you'll see two uh, options, right? One for maintainers and one for contributors. And on the maintainer side, you will see all the available resources that we'll discuss today. And again, these are developed by maintainers for maintainers. Um, under community, you will see three different resources. One is the community CRM runbook, uh, project health, and contributor growth framework. Um, you may have heard about CR uh, CR CM CRMs. Um, they are uh, generally or better known from the sales uh, teams. And uh, I, know, I don't know if you know, or you, if you, may, you, may, you may not know, but there are now like really great um, CRMs for uh, open source projects. And they really help you structure, uh, streamline the, your community work um, by um, yeah, just, just helping you out to do all these little things that you have to remember. And, and, and yeah, that can be tedious and, 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 uh, and so on. So 
In this runbook, what you will learn is uh, what these uh, CRMs are and how they can help you. And um, you'll learn how to best organize your uh, projects, for instance, how to, um, how to uh, break it down maybe in sub-projects or tagging your uh, members. Uh, you may have a member, um, a community member who likes to code in a particular language or has a very particular use case or would like to, or is interested in speaking about your project, right? And um, so by tagging them, maybe let's say a year from now, you uh, need someone with that skill set, you can easily find them because obviously we cannot remember all these conversations, probably whatever you had, whatever conversation you had like two months ago is probably very difficult to kind of remember afterwards. So like the, keeping that information and, and, and organizing that is very helpful. Uh, and then of course, like keeping all the interact, like history of all interactions, right? Like you're probably interacting with a lot of your um, community members on Slack, that is all suddenly lost. You can keep a record of that search for that, uh, which is also very useful when you wanna go back or kind of search for a certain um, a conversation or a certain topic. And then you can automate a lot of tasks, for instance, uh, um, a tweeting, like uh, sending a tweet, thanking a contributor each time a PR is merged, um, or um, set reminders for things that you have to do regularly. Then there's a project health measurement doc, which uh, where you will learn how a healthy project looks like, uh, how to measure project health, and most importantly, how to make sense of all the dev stats that you get. We hear a lot of people have like find it very confusing. Uh, so there you learn all like you kind of know how to navigate those stats. And then you'll learn uh, about things, how responsiveness impacts, uh, impacts project health, how uh, to interpret contributor activity and uh, even uh, contributor risk. So if that's something that you're interested, really check that out. There are lots of great information in here. And the last one is uh, the contributor growth framework. This is a document where you learn, uh, you get a lot of tips from project maintainers on how to motivate and keep your um, contributors motivated, how to incentivize them to do more, and how to encourage non-code contributions. These are somehow very fluffy things, uh, a lot of it, but they're, they're really what the things that make your community stick. So some of them may feel very obvious, but sometimes it's good to really hear it from maintainers and how they, they handle all that. Okay, so we also have a governance section on the contribute, contribute site. So governance is all about alignment and getting all of the various people within your community collaborating together. And it's one of those things that you may think you don't need until something has already gone wrong. Expectations aren't aligned, you're seeing unhealthy dynamics within the community. Governance helps outline the expectations around roles and responsibilities along with the decision-making processes. So it's important to have at least these basics around governance in place as early as possible. In the governance section of contribute.cncf.io, we have several guides published. And the tag is always working on more. So for starters, the overview section talks about the what and why of governance, along with roles, policies and procedures, and how to document your governance. Having a charter will help people understand the mission, scope, and values or principles to avoid issues and misunderstandings that might come up later. The overall cloud nat native ecosystem is super complex with many, many projects containing overlapping functionality. So this can help end users understand how your project fits into the overall ecosystem and what functionality it has compared to all of the many alternatives. Now the charter section of the website has details about how and where to include this information. And we have links to examples from other existing CNCF projects that we think have done a nice job in documenting some of these areas. Now the CNCF does not require projects to have any specific governance model, but by the time a project gets to the graduated stage and frankly, hopefully way before that, the governance process will need to include details about how leaders are selected. Our biggest piece of advice is that your process for selecting leaders should be appropriate for the size and type of your project. For example, small projects do not need elections to select leaders from three maintainers. 
Now, the good news is that Tag Contributor Strategy, we are here to help you put all of the pieces together to make leadership selection and other governance documentation easier with governance templates that any project, CNCF or otherwise, can use. You can clone the repo linked on the slide and just copy the templates that you need over to your project. Right now, we still have the comments. They're embedded in the markdown file with details about what pieces you need to update. But we're in the process of actually moving those out into separate, more detailed how-to guides to make them easier to use. Now, right now, we have three governance templates. All of the templates contain a section about values, but the rest of the template varies depending on how your leaders are selected. Now, maintainer is by far the most common, especially for small to medium-sized projects. In this governance model, existing maintainers are responsible for selecting new maintainers. Elections are commonly used for larger projects like Kubernetes and Knative, who have things like elected steering committees, technical oversight committees, those sorts of things. The sub-projects template is, is pretty niche, and it's actually only used in cases where you have kind of a bigger umbrella project with smaller sub-projects that operate mostly independently. Now, we also have several contributing templates, including a contributing.md template. We also have a reviewing.md template that contains a reviewing guide that your project can use to provide information about the reviewing process for your project. There's also a contributor ladder template that's designed to be used with any of the various governance templates to help your contributors understand the path to moving into roles with increasing levels of responsibility, including various leadership positions. We also have maintainer circles, which after a brief hiatus are resuming and it should be happening about once a month or so. There was one earlier today here at KubeCon that was focused on skills required for um, doing code reviews and other types of reviews with a, do a discussion about the care that you need to put into being a reviewer. And we're working on plans for the next several meetings too. And these are designed to be a mix of information with scheduled topics along with plenty of time for networking and talking to your peers. Because being a maintainer is hard. And this is a way for you to get support and learn from your peer maintainers. If you need a resource that doesn't yet exist, there's a good chance that someone else probably needs it too. So we encourage you to join us and help us build new resources. We're open source folks, right? We love to create things that other people can also get value from. So why not share what you come up with, with with the rest of the group? Now, we've only been around for a couple of years, about two years or so. And we have loads of ideas on our backlog, but only so many people to work on them. Anyone can drop into our meetings, the Tag Contributor Strategy meetings, if you'd like to join us and build something together, or just let us know what you need. You can also drop in at any time for advice about any aspect of contributor strategy for your CNCF projects, because we are here to help you. And here's where you can find us to get help for your project or to volunteer to help us build new resources. We're pretty active on Slack, so that's a good way to reach all of us. The mailing list is relatively low volume and is a really good way to get notified about things like meetings and other tag activities. And as I mentioned earlier, you can drop into our meetings to get advice or join us. And I encourage CNCF maintainers to participate in our maintainer circle meetings. So Tag Contributor Strategy is more than just a place to develop resources. We're really creating a cross-project community of maintainers who can connect, exchange ideas, and support each other. Managing an open source project can be really challenging, but a supportive community can provide resources, advice, or maybe just listen when you're struggling with something. And when you use our resources, please let your peers and other people know how useful they are. Join our community, you can meet our team, you can get involved, and we would love it if you would tell people about us. So feel free to share this link with whoever, social media, team members, people who might be interested. Now what we've done is we've left a load of time at the end so that we can have discussion and Q&A. So if you want to ask questions about any of the stuff that we've talked about or have a discussion about any of this, we have plenty of time for that. So thank you.
Questions? Yes. Do you want the microphone? Or is it quick? No, it's we have a we have a being recorded. So either I can repeat it or you can, yeah. There we on? go. It should be it on? on. I think yeah. he'll turn it on in the back. Maybe he'll turn it on in the back. I think. He's turning it on right now. Nope. Okay. Just go ahead. I'll repeat your question okay. while he sorts out the microphone. Um, well, the question was regarding examples for the uh, CRM, uh, CRMs. Um, so, I well, basically the runbook is. So I don't, I don't have like a particular project in mind. I know that several are using it, but I don't. Yeah, but the CRM, basically, what is it's doing? We kind of got feedback from different different people who are using it, and to give advice on how they're using it. So, yeah, I think like the, it's embedded in there and. Like I'm sure we can get some some names and but I, I yeah but the idea of the runbook is basically that so so you have the CRM that you can use but then you also get like how different projects have been using it specifically and yeah I muted myself yeah the CRM runbook which is what I'm not showing at all on the screen um, because it's in the wrong window. Um. Nope. Wow. Wow. Nope. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe another question while we wait for that. Anyone? Okay. Do we have the mic or not? No. Just go ahead. We'll repeat okay. it. I was oh, okay. So uh, generally, like, if people, uh, if users get like um, impatient and start like asking in questions, and then you get like plus one, plus one, plus one. So. I don't know, I'm just gonna say my opinion and then we can say, so I think in general, um, it helps, like, exp I mean, they're all humans, right? Um, so sometimes it helps to explain that, I don't know if you're doing it full-time or not full-time or something, it's like, hey, I'm doing it also on my spare time. We're all like kind of doing it uh, um, on, uh, on the side and kind of explain a little bit that things take a little bit more time. Uh, expectation management in general is kind of um, so is it like when you're when they're asking for features or for help or in general for features yeah I think I would just explain a little bit like hey this is we have all these things on the roadmap so just ignoring it might not might not be, not be good but it, people don't have if they don't have context they don't know they don't know what's going on so just explaining your situation which is something that I would do in a very normal interaction too I don't know yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing could help if you have like a roadmap or a project board or something mm. where people can see all of the other things that you're working on. That can also help because you can see that, you know, we've got this, we've got this public roadmap or this project board or whatever it is. And these are the things we're working on now. This is where we've added your feature and it's going to be another two releases because of all of these other things. And that can sometimes help people put things in context too. Any other suggestions from the audience? Because this is a, this is a discussion. Yes, here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mic run. Or fast walk. Okay. One thing we've done is offer them the contributor's guide in terms of here's how you could contribute a patch. Here's kind of maybe have a mentor that's on the team that could help them and say if you're interested and really want it, then this is kind of... Because basically you can't do it all, and, and if you're really busy, sometimes it's like we will gladly help you maintain it or at least implement it. So that's another way of kind of suggesting to them if you really, really want it that bad, then maybe contributing to the project could get it in faster. Yeah, and encouraging all of those people who are plus wanting it, maybe one of them would be willing to, to pick it up too. Other thoughts on that or other questions? Being a maintainer is hard. There have to be other questions. Sorry, I'm not going to let you all off the hook that easily. Yeah. Uh, so in this talk that I am seeing on the screen, I see that there's a, something about gifts or stuff like that. Does, does that mean when we have a CRM, we could actually maintain a list of 
people's contact information is in there for future interactions. Is like, is that something we could do? It's um, not necessarily contact information. So it does pull information from Twitter, Slack. So it's not like that you get their emails or anything. So it's not like a sales uh, CRM, right? But um, you want to have a full view of what people have done. You know, like what 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 they have said in on 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 uh, in your uh, Slack integration. So you have you, it starts creating profiles based on how people have interacted with your project. So, but it's not supposed to be uh, something where you start emailing. So that's kind of like the difference because it's like for, yeah. 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 Other questions, comments, thoughts, things you want to discuss with your peer maintainers in the room? Or something you're struggling with right now. People are tired. We're not used to all this face-to-face -face interaction, all this KubeCon. How much time do we have left? Does anybody know? Five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, Josh says. Yeah. Well, um, I missed uh, the, the beginning of this uh, session, so I just right like this but uh, it comes to me um, a, a question uh, I was earlier at the maintainer circle and here there's like 7,000 people uh, attending the conference and I was like seeing dozens of people and here I don't see many people so is there like um, a major um, need to uh, welcome more contributors and uh, if yes uh, are there areas where we could help like uh, technical training regarding uh, the Go programming language or other things, or what is the major, is it that people don't have enough personal time to contribute, or is there like some technical barriers to uh, contributing more to the CNCF Foundation? What are your feelings uh, on this? I think, I think yes to all of that, um, frankly. I mean, it's uh, getting, getting contributors for your project is hard, right? Um, and we have a lot of people here at KubeCon, but you know, there's only there are only so many maintainers, there are only so many so many projects, and only so many people who can who can contribute. And I think, you know, anything that we can do to reduce some of those barriers to contribution. So from a tech, you know, from a technical standpoint, having really good new contributor docs to get more to get more people involved. Um, I think also, you know, we have a big we have a big issue right now in the CNCF with a lot of projects, um, Kubernetes in particular where maintainers are just burnt out and we just don't have enough maintainers. And, and so it's getting to be a real problem and we really need to start thinking about, you know, and it takes more time up front, right? To take those newbie contributors and grow them into maintainers and into, you know, into reviewers and approvers and kind of push them up the contributor ladder. But it's something I think we need to, to focus on and spend more time doing and particularly you know, people from maybe other backgrounds who wouldn't necessarily be contributing. How do we, how do we find more of these people and how do we get them involved in our projects and how do we, how do we help them, even though it might take some time and might take a little bit of help, how do we get them into those maintainer positions? And so I would, I would take a close look at all of your project docs and your contributing docs and, you know, think about what you're doing to make it easier for new contributors and then also think about other programs you could put in place. So Kubernetes Contributor Experience SIG has some fantastic ones. They have, you know, Kubernetes does a lot of shadowing. So the release team has um, shadows. So, you know, the, all of the various components within the release team, everybody has a shadow who will eventually, hopefully, if they, they do well, then move up into that leadership position. We did the same thing for, for other parts of, of Kubernetes. And so, you know, think about whether you can put in place some, some shadowing programs for various elements of your community. And where can you get people engaged? You know, honestly, Kubernetes, a lot of people get involved in uh, SIG release because it's, you know, they can, they can shadow somebody and it's a relatively easy way to get involved in, in Kubernetes. And then they can eventually move on to other, other things within the project. So think about anything you can do to kind of reduce those barriers. It's on that, it's on that. Losing my microphone. 
Yeah. You have a comment, and then Tim has one. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, I don't know if anybody else agrees, that um, the maintainers of not the actual Kubernetes itself, but the other sub-projects don't get really recognition. And it's a really hard job to do, and it's, most people do it out of passion. They could do it out of passion for two, three years, but if they keep doing it, they'll burn out eventually. And uh, one thing I think I'm, is missing that uh, we could give them a little bit more recognition, especially they could use that recognition in their day jobs to get their career growth goals as well, because they would see their colleagues in their companies would you know, get better career growth results than they are doing with the maintainers. So I think, I think uh, we are missing something on may recognizing the maintainers of not the actual community, but the other soft projects. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, anything that we can do to recognize the maintainers that are keeping all of our software running, I think would be helpful. I was gonna say something similar. Um, as we try to get more awareness and visibility and connection, we talk about how do we grow our community, get more people into the maintainer ranks, or just even reviewer before that. But that's, that's trying to grow the community, but sometimes we also need to think about how we grow ourselves. We often come into a leadership position because we're good at coding or the, the, that traditional side of things, but you need to, to avoid burnout yourself. You need to spread the workload and pull other people in who can do different things. And also learn, to, learn new skills about leadership Part of that might be instead of writing code, writing a business case to encourage businesses to incentivize their employees to care about these things. And that's not natural for most of us, so we have to stretch to learn how to make those types of arguments. And then one other last thing I'd give a plug for CNCF, they do have marketing for, uh, it, it, this isn't KubeCon, this is KubeCon Cloud NativeCon. There's a whole bunch of projects and there is an effort to get the word out more about other projects and what they're doing and where they need help as well. So as maintainers, leverage that. The CNCF is a foundation that exists for you. Yeah, that's a really good point because there are loads of other CNCF resources that you can tap into. There's actually a social media channel on the CNCF Slack and you know, if it's project related and it's neutral and it's not coming from a company account, they're generally happy to retweet lots of things. So if you need contributors for your project, your CNCF project, and you know, maybe there's a specific area that you're looking for, you can, you can get the CNCF social media to retweet things and, and you can tap into the you know, CNCF marketing depending on what level your project is on. There's different support. Yeah, and the blog posts as well. Like, they're like if you want to publish a blog post, they're super supportive. So it's if it's a project, so you get a lot more visibility. Yeah, Catherine actually just went through this with our tag because we don't have very many people and we have lots of work to do. And so you did a few things to kind of promote it. Yeah, just like I mean, like just reach out to them. They're again, they're super supportive and said like, hey, can we do a blog post? And then they. They got us lo lots of opportunities as well, um, yeah, to just get a little bit more awareness. So they are very helpful. You just have to reach out. They just may not know that you need them right now. So I think in the marketing and PR are the two areas where you can do a lot with them, and they can do a lot. They can help a lot. Any final questions? Yeah. I'm going to get my exercise this way. That's my goal. <laughs> I could have asked why you were still here. Um, I think there's a bit of a conflict between um, like the, the many things that maintainers already ha have on their plate and setting up additional processes and the governance structure where you have regular meetings and the board. And um, so I, I don't know how to overcome this, but it feels like extra work in addition to the work you already have and that's already too much. So I don't really know how to motivate a, a maintainer community to say, okay, we need these structures because they maybe take some work off of our plates. If that makes sense. I think Josh has an answer to this in the back. I, I work with a lot of the smaller projects in CNCF. Um, and the answer to this is look for ways to do this with minimal effort. Like we say things like you should have a weekly community meeting. And that doesn't mean that you should have a separate meeting that is specifically a community meeting. It means 
when you do your weekly development sync meeting or bi-weekly development sync meeting, make that open and recorded. Um, because actually, it turns out your biggest problem with regular community meetings is that you don't have a lot of people other than your maintainers show up. And this way, at least you're getting some work done if nobody else shows up. And if somebody does show up, they're going to immediately get drawn into whatever it is, you know, whatever your current technical crisis is, and maybe might be able to help. Um, and, you know, and then beyond that, Catherine and, and Dawn have just gone over a lot of the templates and stuff with the idea that, hey, you need to set these things up, but by set them up, you mean fill in some blanks, you know, and make a copy. Because um, for a small project, they don't actually need a lot, you know. Yeah, and the other thing you can do is kind of rotate some of the responsibilities around. That can help too, where it's not one person, one particular maintainer getting stuck with doing everything, but you can kind of shift things around so that different people are responsible for it at different times. That's worked pretty well with the, the Kubernetes community meeting in particular, where different people lead it every, every month. Any last questions? Okay, we're almost out of time, so I will let you off the hook at this point. So thank you everyone for coming. We really appreciate the discussion. Thank you.